If you ever wanted to make use of the recording studio in the makerspaces, but didn't know where to start, here's a helpful guide to walk you through the basics. In this video, we're going to pretend we're recording a podcast episode, and we'll go over how to set up the microphone, how to use Logic Pro, and how to export your project. First, set up your mic stand. You can adjust the height by untightening this piece and finding the right height for your position and tightening it again. If you need to adjust the angle, first untighten this piece, find the right angle, and tighten it again. Avoid adjusting the angle without loosening that piece. Now go ahead and screw on the shock mount. The shock mount absorbs any little bumps to the mic stand that might make its way into the microphone. Now with the logo facing up and towards you, insert your mic into the shock mount. Take what's called the windscreen and screw it on close to the end of the stand. Now plug in what's called the XLR cable into the bottom end of the microphone and into the first input of what's called the audio interface. The audio interface is what receives the signal from your microphone and converts it into a digital signal for your computer. Now, don't forget to tidy up the cable to avoid tripping hazards. This particular microphone needs to be powered, so on your audio interface, you need to switch on 48 volts, or what's sometimes called phantom power. If your audio interface looks like this, you'll find it here. Now you can turn up the headphone knob here. You can start at 12 o'clock and adjust accordingly. While recording, you should turn your monitor speakers all the way down to avoid any feedback from your microphone. Now you can set the level of your microphone. Position your mouth so that it's about six to eight inches away from the grill of the microphone. You can make the letter Y sign in sign language to test the distance. Now start speaking in your normal podcast voice and slowly start turning up what's called the gain knob until you start seeing a green ring around the knob. Green will indicate that you have a high enough signal, but not too high. You'd see a yellow or red ring if the signal was too high. If you have this interface, we'll show you how to set your levels using Logic Pro. Open up Logic Pro on the computer. You can find it by using Spotlight Search. Use Command Spacebar on your keyboard, and now search for Logic Pro. Go ahead and click Empty Project. Here, you have to select your track type. Go ahead and click Audio. Make sure your input matches the position of the cable on your audio interface. If you're plugged into the first input on the very left, then make sure input one is selected here. This is the channel strip for your newly created audio track. Over here is where you can monitor your level. Begin talking in your podcast voice and turn the knob on your audio interface until you see your voice bouncing around minus 12 dB. And that should be pretty close to this line here. This concludes our section on setting up your hardware for recording. If you want to take a deeper dive into recording a variety of instruments in a studio environment, check out the course entitled Audio Recording Techniques from LinkedIn Learning, which you can access for free using your library card. In the previous section, we opened up Logic Pro for the first time and we added an audio track. If you're recording a podcast episode with a friend, you can add another track by going to Track, New Tracks, and selecting Audio, and then the correct input for your friend. Double click here to rename your audio tracks. Now you have to record arm your tracks. This lets Logic know which tracks will be writing when you press record. Press the little R icon over here to record arm your track. By default, Logic will give you a four beat countdown before it starts recording. If you want to turn that off, you can click the one, two, three, four icon here. Now you're ready to press record. And when you're done recording, you can press stop here. You can also use the space bar to play and to stop. This concludes our section on recording using Logic Pro. If you want to take a deeper dive into using Logic Pro, check out the course entitled Logic Pro X Central Training on LinkedIn Learning. 
Now that you have some recordings you're happy with, you might want to edit them just a bit. You can double click on your clip here to bring up the audio track editor. This is where you can get a zoomed in version of your clip to edit. First, if your waveform is too small, you can click the waveform zoom button here to enlarge the waveforms. We're happy with the size of our waveforms, so we're just gonna to toggle this off. If you wanna cut out a bit at the beginning of your clip, position your mouse at the lower left edge of the clip until your cursor changes to this symbol. Now click and drag to its new length. If you wanna fade in from the beginning of the clip, position your mouse at the upper edge of the clip until your cursor changes to this symbol and click and drag. If you need to make a cut in the middle of a clip, drag the playhead to exactly where you want your cut to be made. Now go to edit, split, regions that playhead, or just command T on your keyboard. Now you have two clips. If you wanna blend the end of these two clips into each other with a crossfade, position your mouse on the top half of where the two clips meet, then click and drag into one of the clips. You should see the two fade lines. If you only see one, you'll have to drag the other way. If you're making a very tiny crossfade, you can use this zoom slider here to get a better look at the waveforms. Lastly, if your podcast has a music intro, you can import that track into your project. First, create a new track, name it, and then select it. Now click File, Import, Audio File, or you can hit Shift-Command-I on your keyboard. Locate the file in the File Explorer and click Open. Now arrange all your clips in the order for your episode, and then you'll be ready to mix them down. Now it's time to set the proper levels for your mix. You can toggle the mixer by clicking this icon over here or hitting X on your keyboard. Here, you'll see our three tracks, our voices, and our intro song. Next to that is the stereo out. It shows you the level of all the sounds put together. Before you press play, click this yellow bar here and size it so that it covers all of your tracks. Then you'll be looping this section over and over. Now listen to your project and determine if certain levels need to be louder or quieter. Similar to setting recording levels, you want to be bouncing around minus 12 to minus 6. If you're seeing these indicators at orange or red, that level definitely needs to come down because it is too loud. You can do that by using these faders here to adjust the level. While you're mixing, you can also choose to apply any effects to any channels. Plugin effects can be a central part of any mix, even with a project as simple as a podcast episode. Certain effects can enhance your recording and give your voice a more polished quality. Applying effects is outside the scope of this video, but if you want to take a deeper dive on how to use plugin effects, look for the Audio Foundations course on LinkedIn Learning. Lastly, when you're mixing, if you want your volume or your effect to change over time, you can do that using automation. For example, you can use automation when you have an audio track that starts at a normal volume, and then your voice kicks in and the audio lowers to continue playing in the background. Double click on your music clip to open up the audio editor. Go ahead and extend the audio clip so that it plays with your voice clip. Fix your playhead to where your voice clip just begins. Now click the Show Hide Automation button here. By default, your automation should be turned on. If you need to toggle it on or off, you can click this button here. Now click any area on the clip within the editor. Where the playhead is, click on the yellow line to create a point. Now create another point on the line not too far from the one you just created. Drag this point down to a level where the music sounds like it's comfortably in the background. You can replay and adjust until it sounds just right. Now that your mix is ready to share, you'll have to export it as an audio file. This is not the same as clicking Save As, which only saves a copy of this project as a logic file. First, toggle Cycle Mode, 
by clicking this icon here, or clicking the yellow bar like in the previous section. Now size the bar to cover your entire project. To export your project, go to File, Bounce, and then select Project or Section. Here, you can select what file type you want your project to be in. The most common types are a WAV file or an MP3. Select the location for your file. You can always choose the desktop. Now click Bounce. Logic Pro will now export what's called a bounce of your project, and you should now have a copy of your project as an audio file in the location that you've saved it. Just note that when you log off the Makerspace computer, you won't be able to access your file, so be sure to save it on a thumb drive or a cloud drive. This concludes our video on how to get started using the Recording Studio in our Makerspaces. If you want to learn more, be sure to visit LinkedIn Learning and search Logic Pro, Audio Foundations, or even VoiceOver and Podcasting.